Meet the rural urban consumers, a demographic that lives on the fringes between big cities and small settlements. Comprising nearly 3.5 billion people around the globe, they have a combined spending power that could rival urban spenders. Brands are now reaching out to this diverse group, not just to sell them products and services, but to build long-term relationships. China and India are home to the biggest rural populations in the world. India has about 850 million rural consumers across 650,000 villages. That's 70% of the country's population. China has close to 580 million with 100,000 villages and 480 small and medium cities. So if you look at China, it's had quite a transition over the last 40 years. It used to be most people in China lived in the countryside, and there's been a, a large push for urbanisation. And it's gone from 20% of urbanisation to around 60% now live in China's cities. So about 40% of the population are considered rural consumers, which means those that live outside of those urban centres. But as landscapes change, the definition of a rural consumer is evolving. Compared to urban centres, which are usually dense and concentrated, rural areas are more sparse and remote. Some companies, however, now classify places with 20,000 to 50,000 inhabitants as rural urban or urban. Strides in development mean these settlements have grown larger than a typical rural area and become more urbanised. With urban consumption expected to contribute to over 80% of GDP growth in China and 60% in India, this consumer class is a force to be reckoned with. Xinle County in China is home to several urban zones. This county was once famously known as the grain, watermelon and peanut capital of China. But today, its residents have moved from their agricultural roots to embrace more modern and industrial pursuits. Many rural migrant workers travel to urban areas from their village to find work. In Xinle, the shopping landscape has also changed dramatically in recent years. China roughly divides its cities into several tiers based on population size, GDP and political stature. Tier 1 cities are the most developed like Shanghai, Beijing, Guangzhou and Shenzhen. County-level urban areas like Xinle are Tier 4 cities. With nearly 500 of them nationwide, they represent the biggest growth market for consumer brands. Factory workers from Tier 4 urban areas, like Yaping, earn about 240 US dollars a month, which, added together with her husband's wages, makes her middle class by Chinese standards. Though online shopping is growing, urban customers still prefer to check out new products in physical stores. The Xinyuelo retail group saw the potential of the rising urban consumer class three decades ago. Started in 1984, it now operates 35 department stores in mainly Tier 3 and 4 cities. It currently carries popular foreign brands like L'Oreal, Gillette and Philips, and even operates an e-commerce store of its own. 
。然后我现在逐渐逐渐新楼，呃，去新楼转了，看了好多国际品牌的，像耐克啊、阿迪达斯啊这些的。呃，其实这些渐渐也知道了，也感觉到看着人家穿的也挺好，质量质量确实挺好的，也有想买的冲动。While imported goods were once perceived as being superior in quality and style, a recent survey by McKinsey also showed that many consumers in smaller cities and towns prefer Chinese products over foreign ones, such as dairy and casual wear. But local consumers were also often confused by where brands come from. For instance, some 50% of people surveyed thought 7up and Yakult were Chinese in origin. More often than not, brands targeting urban communities need reliable partners with insights and the right connections. eCargo is an e-commerce agency that helps foreign brands penetrate the Chinese market by using both offline and online distribution channels. Being hands-on has proven critical in expanding its customer base. When you go to these cities, a lot of the time they don't have as many of these recreational or educational experiences that you might otherwise get in first, second tier cities. So therefore, going to the mall and shopping, you know, it's an experience shared by families and friends. We even see, you know, first dates going and walking through the aisles of people shopping for imported products. Retail is king in these particular areas. It's still about the purchase, it's still about seeing the actual product, and that's something that we don't see as slowing down anytime soon. Australian, Australia, very famous. Uh, we're working with one of our fantastic retailers, Xinyulo, uh, to put on an international product event and showcase. Um, really exciting, you know, we're here, we're mixing with the, with the consumers. It's about getting in front of these consumers and understanding what they like. There's China-produced oats, which are fantastic and great quality as well. But by us being able to promote Australian quality oats, to show the consumer how they're different, but most importantly, to appeal to their different palates and tastes. The consumer here in Hebei really likes sort of sweeter. So we're adding cranberries, we're adding a little bit of honey, which is helping to make particularly the children very responsive to this product. And so we're able to tailor this, a simple product like oats, accordingly to the different regional markets. <laughs> 这个全球的好商品，第一个我我觉得哈，从我这个角度来讲，我是先注重这个商品的安全性、健康性，啊，商品的品质，然后呢，其次我会在意它的性价比。Beyond the malls, businesses are now engaging the urban consumer in more innovative ways. Imagine one-stop shops that serve up everything from groceries to cash withdrawals and e-services far away from the urban sprawl. The rural urban consumer doesn't conform to stereotypes. Countries like China and India are as diverse as they are vast and made up of different income, ethnic and cultural groups that marketeers have to address. So there's some pretty common difficulties that brands face when they're trying to reach rural consumers. One is not understanding them. And, and two, they're not a generic consumer group, so they can differ from region to region and even village to village. So one, understanding them, but two, having a price point that really is okay with these consumers. But another is just being able to connect to distributors and get their products in the channels, in the stores that these consumers are actually buying. Twenty-two-year-old Kaviarani was raised in the village of Makanahali. Hailing from generations of farmers, she's the first in her family to embark on a different career as an IT trainer, where she earns 170 US dollars a month. This millennial has aspirations to live a more urban lifestyle. 
ನಾವು ಅಂಗ್ ಶಾಪ್ಸಲ್ಲಿ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಅಂಗಡಿ ಊರಲ್ಲೇ ಇದೆ ತುಂಬ ಶಾಪ್ಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಅಂದರೆ ಕ್ಲಾತ್ ಶಾಪ್ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಬಟ್ಟೆ ಆ ಥರ ಅದೆಲ್ಲ ಊರಲ್ಲೇ ಸಿಗುತ್ತೆ ಸಮಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಊರಲ್ಲಿ ಇರೋದು ಸ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಫೈ ಆಗಲ್ಲ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ನೂ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿರೋದು ಬೇಕು ಅಂದರೆ ಹತ್ರದಲ್ಲೇ ನಮಗೆ ಸಿಟಿಗಳಿದ್ದಾವೆ ಅಂದರೆ ನಾವು ಬಟ್ಟೆ ಆ ಥರ ತೊಗೊಳ್ಬೇಕಂದ್ರೆ ಹೊಸ್ಕೋಟೆ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ ಟು ಟ ಏನು ಟ್ವೆಲ್ ಟು ತರ್ಟಿ ಕಿಲೋಮೀಟರ್ಸ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಸೊ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋಗಿ ಪರ್ಚೇಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊತೀವಿ ಕ್ಲಾತ್ಸ್ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ For many rural and urban consumers, access to malls and markets remains an issue. In the remote areas of India, nearly 33% of villages lack proper roads and infrastructure. For many, a trip to the city takes up a lot of time and costs them an entire day of wages. ಕೆಲವೊಂದು ಸತಿ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಖಾಲಿ ಆಗಿರ್ಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ನಾವು ತೊಗೊಳ್ಬೇಕಂದ್ರೆ ತುಂಬ ದೂರ ಹೋಗ್ಬೇಕಾಗುತ್ತಲ್ವಾ ಸೊ ಆ ಟೈಮಲ್ಲಿ ವೆಹಿಕಲ್ಸ್ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂದರೆ ಕಷ್ಟ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಯಾಕಂದರೆ ಬಸ್ಸಸ್ ಕನ್ವೀನಿಯೆಂಟ್ ಅಷ್ಟೊಂದಿಲ್ಲ ಹಳ್ಳಿಗಳ ಕಡೆ ಬಸ್ಸಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ ಟೈಮ್ಗೆ ಬರಲ್ಲ ಹಂಗಾಗಿ ಆವಾಗ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಡಿಫಿಕಲ್ಟ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಆನ್ಲೈನಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಮೊಬೈಲ್ಸ್ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಮೊಬೈಲ್ ಆಕ್ಸಿಸರೀಸ್ ಏರ್ಫೋನ್ಸ್ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಏರ್ಫೋನ್ಸ್ ಚಾರ್ಜಸ್ ಮತ್ತು ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಿಕಲ್ ಐಟಮ್ಸ್ನ ಪರ್ಚೇಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ಯಾಕಂದರೆ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಿಕಲ್ ಐಟಮ್ಸ್ ಶಾಪ್ಸ್ ನಮಗೆ ನಿಯರ್ ಇಲ್ಲದೆ ಇರೋದ್ರಿಂದ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ದೂರ ಇರೋದ್ರಿಂದ ಸೊ ಆನ್ಲೈನಲ್ಲಿ ಶಾಪ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ನಮಗೆ ಸಿಗುತ್ತೆ ಈಸಿಯಾಗಿ ಕೂತಿದ್ದ ಜಾಗದಲ್ಲೇ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬೋದು ಬಟ್ ಏನಂದರೆ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ಒಂದು ಸತಿ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿರೋ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ನ ಕೊಡೋಲ್ಲ ಆ ಟೈಮಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾತ್ರ ಬೇಜಾರಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಟು ಅಡ್ರೆಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಶ್ಯೂ Online shopping giants Flipkart and Amazon India have tied up with reliable logistics partners with systems that enable last mile delivery to many remote areas. Started in 2016, OneBridge is one such company that's aiming to close the gap between sellers and urban customers by offering product orders, deliveries and other out of reach services. We want to be totally relevant and valuable to the household. anything the household wants we want to be able to aggregate those services for the household and bring it to the household our one word logistics network do last mile delivery and we do thousands of packages a month two we enable financial transactions that we can say we know how to collect money digitize it and deliver it to you and third i can run promos campaigns and or originate orders for you there and make sure that it's fulfilled the core of one bridge's operations are its local representatives with 2500 of them across five states Vine is the owner of a small neighborhood shop or a Kirana store with one bridge he's helped to bring the world of tech to his village Kiranas are critical to the urban economy with 12 million of them across india a national study revealed that they have a higher profit potential than major stores in part due to the fact that most of them are now adopting technology to serve their customers better after tying up with one bridge in 2018 vine became a local rep and started offering e services like digital banking mobile top ups bill payments and delivery of online shopping orders ಅಂತ ಸಬ್ಮಿಟ್ ಆಯತೆ ಒಂದು ಎರಡು ಮೂರು ದಿನ ಬಿಡ್ಕೊಂಡ್ ಬನ್ನಿ ನಾನು ಹೇಳ್ತೀನಿ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇ ಪಾನ್ ಬತೈತೆ ಅವಾಗ ನಿಮಗೆ ಪ್ರಿಂಟ್ ಔಟ್ ನಾನು ಕೊಡ್ತೀನಿ ನಮ್ಮೂರಲ್ಲಿ ಬ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಇಲ್ಲ ನಾವು ಎ ಟಿ ಎಮ್ಗೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಹೋಗಬೇಕು ಅಂದರೆ ಇವಾಗ ಐದು ಕಿಲೋಮೀಟರ್ ದೂರ ಹೋಗಿ ಅದನ್ನು ನಾವು ತಗೋಣೋ ಅಷ್ಟಕ್ಕೆ ಬ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಕ್ಲೋಸ್ ಆಗೋದು ತಿರ್ಗ ನಿರಾಸೆಯಿಂದ ವಾಪಸ್ ಬರಬೇಕಾಗಿತ್ತು ಇವಾಗ ಏನಂದರೆ ವಿನಿ ಇರೋದ್ರಿಂದ ನಾವು ಯಾವಾಗ ಬೇಕಾದರೂ ಅವಾಗ ಫೋನ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಕರೆಸ್ಕೊಂಡು ನಾವು ಡ್ರಾ ಮಾಡ್ಕೋಬೋದು ಡ್ರಾ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ಅದೇ ಇದರಿಂದ ಉಪಯೋಗ ನಮಗೆ ಮೊದಲು ನಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗಿ ಇವೆಲ್ಲ ನಮಗೆ ರಿಸ್ಕ್ ಆಗೋದು ವೀನೆ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ಸ್ ವಿಲೇಜಸ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸ್ ಅಫಿಷಿಯಲ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಸಚ್ ಎಸ್ ಐ ಡಿ ಕಾರ್ಡ್ ಅಪ್ಲಿಕೇಶನ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ದೇ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಫೈಲ್ ದ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಸ್ effectively becoming the one stop e service center for the area i think in rural there's a huge opportunity for value creation not because you're giving discounts but you're truly providing them a service uh, that is usually not available to them what aspect is trust and loyalty unfortunately in india a lot of our rural consumers have been scammed by various people going in and promising the moon 
and then shortchanging them, right? So whenever we've gone into many of these villages, they look at us with a hint of suspicion, saying, hey, what you guys are saying, is it too good to be true? Will I get scammed? So having a local partner who's trusted by the community and who trusts us is a critical component, so to speak. Building trust with urban and rural consumers is a vital strategy for gaining mind share. Companies are realizing that beyond their usual marketing channels, they have to go the extra mile with education and even personalized service. Multinationals like Unilever run regular health education programs and campaigns in the field to promote hygiene and sanitation across Asia's urban and rural communities. In Indonesia, ride-hailing startups like Gojek even help to deliver medical supplies from local hospitals to residents in more remote areas who cannot travel. These strategies help the brands build both goodwill and awareness for their services among the growing urban centers. Meanwhile, in India and China, the real battleground for the urban dollar is playing out in the digital space. With billions of dollars at stake, the game of retail is being transformed further with technology. Comprising nearly 3.5 billion people living in the world's rural urban areas, the 21st century urban consumer has arrived. Once seen as frugal and conservative in their spending, they are now increasingly brand and quality conscious. For a long time, companies used to think that, you know, when they're reaching out to rural consumers, they can go with maybe a lower, you know, lower standard of product quality, or maybe the people will just want cheaper products, even if they don't offer all the features. That doesn't hold true, you know, anymore. While we certainly don't discount the importance of being very strong and present in first and second tier cities, we find that the opportunities that are available from third, fourth and even fifth tier cities are really key China growth currently. We see that there's a huge amount of investment and spending that's going in from both a government but also an economics perspective in broadening out the prosperity throughout these regions. In China's rural areas, infrastructure and internet penetration continues to expand exponentially along with disposable incomes which are estimated to double by 2020. In India, a national urban mission is underway to identify and develop 300 urban clusters over the next few years. Recognizing the economic potential of these areas, the aim is to upgrade and invest more in the agricultural sector and close the income gap between the city and countryside. So I think from government's perspective, if the rural economy is slugging, it's hard for the overall economy to grow. So, you know, in order to drive growth in the economy, it's important for them to ensure that the rural consumer sentiment is good. In China, Alibaba's strategy to boost the rural and urban economy has paid off. Over 4,000 villagers so far have enrolled into a Taobao village program, where at least 100 businesses, or 10% of the households in the community, sell locally farmed products and other specialities online. <laughs> As of June 2019, the total sales volume from this scheme hit 700 billion RMB, or 98 billion US dollars. Some 20 million jobs are expected to be created over the next decade. Alibaba's scheme is now being studied by other countries as a means to modernize and improve the fortunes of other rural economies. E-commerce has also changed the urban population's consumption patterns in China. Online sales exceeded 100 billion US dollars in mid-2019, 
outpacing the national growth rate. In order to meet the demand, Alibaba has set up over 30,000 local service centers in over 700 counties to facilitate orders and pickups, with more to come. Competitors Pinduoduo and JD.com aren't far behind. To overcome logistics issues, JD.com even deploys drones to make deliveries to remote areas. In India, OneBridge has taken it one step further. It is piloting a radical approach to bring modern shopping to the villages all around Bangalore. Wearing VR headsets, urban consumers can choose products ranging from mobile phones to cars in this virtual shopping environment instead of a physical mall. I think there's a huge opportunity for tech. For example, one of our consumers asked us last year, why can't you get a mall to my village? And I was trying to explain him, listen, nobody's going to put a mall in your village because your village is 5,000 people. Uh, how can anybody build a mall? He was saying, hey, you guys are technology guys, why don't you figure something out? And that's when it struck me, if the consumer can't go to the mall, why can't we take a mall to the consumer? And we actually launched India's first ever virtual reality mall for rural consumers. You could actually give them an experience of being inside a virtual reality mall. We could see the products. Then we've tested this over about 50,000 people in the last one year and the response has been phenomenal. As rural consumers get more discerning, the classification of urban, urban and rural consumers will become less distinct. But beyond advertising, the community they live in will play a strong factor in determining the success of a product. The rural consumers trust their networks, you know, more than anything else, right? If there's positive talk about your brand in their local community, you know, their local opinion leaders, then that's really likely to benefit your brand. So it's almost like a network effect that if there's positive word about your brand, then every it will influence everybody in that village.